the monthly meeting of the Fairfield Glade Community Club Board of Directors will come to order. Due to the CDC guidelines and the COVID-19 public health advisories for social distancing, this morning's Board of Directors meeting is open to members of the board, key staff members, and limited observers. This meeting is being recorded and the video will be posted on the Community Club website for member viewing. To honor America, please join me in standing for the Pledge of Allegiance in a moment of silence to remember those who are serving in uniform and those who have been affected by the COVID-19 virus. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Pat, would you please call the roll of the board members? Mr. Fox? Here. Mr. Floral? Here. Mrs. Galloway? Here. Mr. Jones? Here. Mrs. Young? Mrs. Storm? Here. Mr. Whitburn? Here. Mr. Chairman, we have six board members present, therefore we do have a quorum. Thank you, Pat. May I have a motion to approve the minutes of the prior board meeting held on January 28th, 2021? Motion to approve the January minutes. Okay, is there a second? I'll second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? The minutes of the January 28th, 2021 meeting are approved. This morning in the audience, uh, we have uh, Cumberland County Mayor Alan Foster and uh, Sixth District County Commissioner Joe Sherrill. I see him out there as well. Uh, Mayor, did you wanna share a few comments? Sure, thanks for having me back out. I hate to touch this, uh, but can y'all hear me? Is that good? Okay. Thanks for having me out this morning on this beautiful day. Wow, it makes me happy to be alive and well here in Cumberland County, Tennessee. Uh, just have a few things that I want to go over with you. If you're a subscriber to my newsletter, you may have heard some of this already. One of the really neat things I think is that Cumberland County is continuing to lead in our emergency services. Uh, we have recently, we're trying to reduce the spread of COVID-19 and different pathogens and things like that. So we just installed an ultraviolet lighting system on our ambulance fleet. And it's really, it's a really cool system. The, it's UVC technology that's been proven to destroy the DNA of different harmful microorganisms. And the lighting systems, they have a remote, they can activate it from outside. And in just 90 seconds, it kills almost all of any pathogens there including COVID-19 so it's a, a good safety feature for the patients and the staff that are on there during this pandemic. Uh, I believe the last time I was here I mentioned that our EMA director had taken a job with TEMA. We did fill that position. Uh, we filled it with the assistant director Travis Cole. That meant we had to fill the assistant director position and we did fill that with uh, Chris Cox recently so we are back to full staff in our EMA department. We finished the acquisition of the Pelfrey property I've talked about before on Northside Drive, which is the road that goes between Taco Bell and, or not Taco Bell, Romo's and uh, Bojangles. Bojangles there. We did finish that proposition, uh, the acquiring that property. The road department, election commission, and building maintenance are going to be there as of now. Uh, right now, work is being done to prepare it for the election commission. So that's going to be a bit of a different change when we go to vote again. That's where everybody will go for early voting. Last couple of things, I want to give uh, the most recent COVID-19 stats. Yesterday, we had 82 active cases. That is the lowest we've had in Cumberland County since September. Uh, so trending down, which is a good thing. We had at a high, we had 861 active cases on January 10th, I believe it was. So from the January 10th until today, we're down to 82, a big, big drop. That's a good, good thing. Uh, positivity rate for the seven days is just over 7%. And almost 97% of the people that have had it have already recovered. Uh, and only 0.14% of the residents have active cases. That's less than, well less than 1%, so 0.14%. 
want to mention the vaccinations. They are continuing at a very strong pace. We started out on the uh, one day that was tough for the, the state uh, when when uh, the age 75 age group was opened up on that Saturday uh, did 981 that day we were the second in the state of the number of vaccinated since then the process has improved immensely uh, when our health department gets vaccines they are putting them in arms within days there is no bottleneck there uh, they're uh, working to make up from some of the closed days last week with the weather and they should have that all caught up within the next few days so there were some i think three days worth of appointments that had to be rescheduled uh, teachers have begun to get their shots and uh with my understanding i believe this week any teacher that wanted it will have had the opportunity to have gotten a shot so that's a good thing 100% of Tennessee nursing homes and skilled nursing facilities have completed both doses. That's an important statistic there, 100%. Uh, Tennessee assisted care living in residential homes for the aged should be completed this week. Uh, Cumberland County it continues to be a leader in the percentages of residents vaccinated. We've had over 15,000 shots given in Cumberland County. Uh, that is 15.85%, almost 16% of the county that has had at least one shot. Out of that 16%, 16.85 have had one dose, and 8.99, almost 9% have had both doses. So we've got a really good setup at the community complex right now. And if you don't, if you're within one of the groups, just call or go online and get your appointment, and hopefully we can get you through there. If we have any questions. Thank you. Sir, I, I did have one. I thought I saw something about pharmacies are now going to be distributing the vaccines. Yes, uh, they, they have to go through a process to get approved. And the only one, I looked before I came in, the only one in Cumberland County that's approved is Young Pharmacy. I've heard that Rockwood has it. Uh, and has doses available. Our our bottleneck is we have so many people wanting it, which is a good thing. Uh, every, we've got a very high population. I believe there's over 18,000 people in Cumberland County that's 65 plus, and that's close to a third of the population. And then you add in all the uh, other risk-based factors, those groups, and there's a large population that's eligible right now, but uh, we're managing it. And there are some other counties that have had Walmarts and things open, but right now Young Pharmacy downtown is the only one that has it here. There was uh, information on the news this morning that um, the Kroger uh, has been approved for, for vaccination distributions, but Kroger is only doing it in 150 of their stores, and they have um, over 1,000 locations. And uh, we went online this morning, and when you uh, look at it, the only place that comes up in the state of Tennessee is a Kroger that's in East. East Nashville someplace so uh, it will probably be a, a significant amount of time before uh, our Kroger's if they ever end up being distribution points. Yeah, and the bottleneck in the system right now isn't the uh, the health department right. it's it's the doses you know they give those doses out just almost as quickly as they get them they're doing a great job by the way if you go through thank them you know sometimes the process may not be perfect but uh, those people there's probably close to two dozen of them that have worked uh, tons of hours and Saturdays and giving up their weekends just to try and get out there they've worked in bad weather they couldn't work when it was 12 degrees but they're really doing everything everything they can. I want to say I'm very proud of the health department there. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Sherrill, did you have any comments that you wanted to share? No, good morning. Good morning. Okay, then I'd like to share uh, a couple of comments from across the board. And we want to begin uh, this month's across the board message with some additional information regarding the COVID-19 vaccination process. The COVID-19 pandemic continues to impact all aspects of our daily lives, and information regarding the pandemic evolves and changes almost daily. Considering the importance of understanding where we are in the war with this virus, the board continues to distribute the latest and most relevant COVID-19 information for Fairfield Glade Community Club members. 
Additional information will be provided from time to time as it becomes available. Now we are also distributing all of the COVID-19 information we receive electronically through our e-blast messages. Uh, those messages are also picked up by our local newspapers and we have uh, recently begun sending the COVID-19 information that we distribute through the U.S. mail to those residents who we do not have a uh, email address for. At the same time, it's important to remember the most reliable source of information affecting your personal health is your primary care physician or your health care provider. There is a reason to be optimistic that we will soon see a reduction in some of the COVID-19 restrictions. However, it is important to remain vigilant even if you have been vaccinated. So please wear a mask, wash your hands, watch your social distancing, and please wait on attending any social gatherings. If you feel sick, get tested. If your test is positive, please follow the isolation and quarantine protocols strictly. Remember, using any of our club facilities is your personal choice and yours to gauge how comfortable you feel in doing so. Help is available for those who need it. Fairfield Glade Residence Services is now providing COVID support to those residents in Fairfield Glade who are quarantined in their homes. FGRS is able to deliver prescriptions, fresh meals from our local restaurants, and groceries to help residents of Fairfield Glade. FGRS believes in the importance of members staying comfortable in their own home until the period of quarantine has expired. If you would like to use the delivery service or you know of a friend or neighbor that could use this help, you're asked to call the FGRS uh, delivery hotline at 931-335-9945 for further information. FGRS will also provide transportation to and from COVID-19 vaccination appointments using the FGRS Way to Go program. If you or a family member, a friend or neighbor has a transportation need, please call the FGRS number at the 931-335-9945 number for details. FGRS also reaches out. Uh, FGRS is also providing a reach out service for Fairfield Glade residents who would like to have an FGRS volunteer to call and check in and see how the resident is doing. The calls can be scheduled at the convenience of the resident and if you or a family member, a friend or neighbor would like to make use of this program, the number is the same 931-335-9945. COVID information uh, hotlines, these questions can be, uh, be answered uh, by calling the Cumberland Health Department at 931-707-9007, and that information line is open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4.30. General questions on COVID can be directed to the COVID-19 public information line at 877-857-2945, and that number is available between 10 a.m. and 8 p.m. Monday through Friday, and 10 until 4 on Saturday and Sunday. The Tennessee Department of Health has announced that effective on February 22nd, 2021, all Tennessee counties regard, can begin registering those age 65 and older and those in the risk-based phases of 1A1, 1A2, and 1B, and that includes the, uh, the teachers are part of that 1B uh, risk-based phase. The first step in the vaccination process is to determine if you are eligible to receive a vaccination. You can contact the Cumberland Health Department through their 931-484-6196 number to schedule an appointment for a first dose of the vaccination until the current supply is depleted. And you may need to try several times to be connected due to the high call volumes. 
If you have internet access, the Tennessee Department of Health has launched a new scheduling tool to allow users to book their appointment for COVID-19 vaccinations at participating health department sites when eligible. The access to that system is going to be embedded in the, uh, the message when we distribute it. And then the, uh, you also, if you have internet access, you are eligible and you are eligible to be vaccinated here in Cumberland County. You can also register for the appointment waiting list and we will have the link for that website embedded in the message as well. The COVID-19 vaccine supply is still very limited and each Tennessee county may progress through their COVID-19 vaccination phases at a different rates depending on the supplies of the COVID-19 vaccine and the number of individuals in each phase in each county. Health Department will announce additional opportunities for residents to receive vaccinations in Cumberland County as increasing vaccine supplies become available and as the county moves to new phases of the vaccination plan. Now you can also make a difference. If you are fortunate to be someone who enjoys living independently and do not need help navigating the COVID-19 vaccination process, you can make a difference. You can be a part of the solution by volunteering to help. FGRS, your local church, and our many service organizations are always in need of volunteers and donations to support their programs. If you do not want to be a part of an organized effort to help, you can always reach out individually to a friend or a neighbor that you know may need some help. Even if they do not want or need your offer of help, the fact that you thought of them and reached out to them can make all the difference. And now we have some updates on our major capital projects. Construction on the new Mirror Lake Entertainment Pavilion continues through the winter months. The work on the pathways uh, leading from the parking areas into the gathering area as well as the plaza in front of the pavilion will occur weather permitting and based upon contractor availability. Construction on the phase two project to expand Stonehenge Kitchen and the exterior renovation is progressing and will continue through March. We expect to reopen the golf course on March 1st and the Stonehenge Grill will reopen in early April. The Racket Center renovation project is also proceeding. We've experienced uh, increased ground preparation work. However, the footers for the new building have been poured and foundation work plus the underground utilities are in progress. So members using the Racket Center facility will continue to use the original pro shop as a temporary entrance and check-in location during the construction. Robin Hood Park, the clearing in the area continues and the initial construction on the new parking lots has started. Other phase one projects that include the refurbishing of the existing pavilion and facilities will begin weather permitting and based upon contractor availability. This morning we'll have a PR to uh, approve for the parking lots, paving, striping, and signage. And then the renovation of the restrooms in the pro shop at Heatherhurst is also proceeding on schedule. The restrooms are complete. Construction on the pro shop is almost complete and fixtures are installed. We expect to reopen the pro shop in early March. And that is our February update uh, from across the board. The next item on the agenda this morning is the treasurer's report. Bruce. not nearly as tall as our mayor so good morning uh, I refer you to the handout that you have uh, and I'm going to uh, go through some numbers as you look through that handout in the dialogue there are some parentheses around some of the significant numbers and then if you go to the charts those numbers correlate uh, with the number that's in the parentheses on the chart so I was trying to get you to look from the, my dialogue into the chart so that it's clear as to which number I'm talking about. 
I'll start with saying that the club has started the year in a strong financial position. The sewer department this year, we began with $3,039,489 of cash, and we ended January with $3,367,171 of cash. And if you look at the balance sheet, you can see where that number resides. The sewer uh, Compared to, and this is compared to, to 2000, $2,466,370 at the end of January 2020, which is a positive change of $900,801. So we are in good cash position with sewer. For the POA, we started the year with $2,561,195 of capital cash and ended the month of January with $2,910,350 of capital cash. For operations, we started the year with $3,691,477 of operating cash, and we ended the month of January with $4,748,301 of operating cash. In total for POA, we started the year with a total cash of $6,252,672. We ended January with $7,658,651 compared to $6,043,420 dollars at the end of January of 2020, which is a positive variation of a million six hundred fifteen thousand two hundred twenty five dollars. So uh, significant improvements. Now looking at the cash flow sheet that's in your package as well, sewer started the year with strong results and a positive variance to budget of twenty nine thousand three hundred sixty two dollars. Most of that was driven by variances in very positive variations in labor and material. And the POA net operations were positive to budget by $56,947. The major contributor to that positive variation was community maintenance was positive $60,052, driven mostly by contractor services, materials and supplies, and R&M cost improvements. Amenities net operations was positive $31,243. The major contributions to that positive variation was golf, which was positive by $24,982, mainly driven by higher rounds and more annual uh, passes than we had expected. Overall, the POA and uh, uh, amenities operations were favorable by $89,191, which is a really good start for the year. Uh, Ken gave you the updates on the uh, two major projects. I'll just add to that in my description that the weather obviously was not very helpful. Uh, and uh, the, the good thing is in Stonehenge, we did get the kitchen enclosed, so they were able to work inside while the weather kept us from working outside. We were not as fortunate at the Racket Center. All the work was outside, and it got delayed tremendously. We now do have the footers in and are going to be able to start the foundation. That project is considerably behind and I won't be able to give you any kind of a target date until we get further into the project and see if the weather is going to hold us up anymore but uh, two contractors are working diligently to make that I I told my MCP, MCPC buddy Dave Miser sitting here that I still want to target April 1st for the kitchen opening but uh, that's really questionable because of all the delays we've had with weather uh, the other thing I'll say to you is that in the uh, executive meeting of the board yesterday afternoon, we talked about the fact that we started the year with $3.7 million of cash. Uh, and typically in POA operations, we like to have a million dollars of reserve, and that gets us through the times like now where a lot of our residents have headed to warmer climates. We don't have the guests and the visitors that we have in the busy times, and so that million dollars of cash kind of gets us through. So what we talked about yesterday was that uh, $2.5 million of that, we want to put in uh, and add to that reserve. If you look on the balance sheet, um, most of the way down down the page, under the, the uh, column marked operations funds, there's a line that says operating reserve $500,000. Uh, our conversation yesterday was to add two and a half million dollars 